So we show ways of um, shortening the measure and opening the way to force the, uh, the opponent to attack. We don't want to uh, instill, instill any bad habits. One way to do that, other than the other examples that we've sh shown from Dalagokie, another one or a couple shown from Dalagokie, one way to get a, an idea of, well, how do I do that? Look in the offenses section. If I start this way and think, okay, I want my opponent to attack me, what's he going to do? He's going to provoke me. He's going to beat my blade, or he's going to make me get out of my guard so that I can open up. He'll throw something to open me up. Those are provocations and beats. Those aren't handled here in this defensive section. Those are handled in the offensive section. If you want to learn how to defend yourself against beats and provocations, that's already described in another chapter. In this chapter, how to defend yourself against various attacks from this guard really is about committed attacks to wound, not provocations, not beats. Those are in another chapter. So another way to get my opponent to attack me, looking at the provocations for Ching Hiali Portfer Estrada. I can throw a, a thrust here passing and guess what? He really wants to attack me as soon as I've done that, right? It's... As when he says, you're going to force your opponent to attack you, that's what he's talking about. There's almost no way he can not attack me there. So if I start with my non-dominant foot forward, I make a thrust insincere to draw out my opponent. I, I make a thrust, it's short, and after I've done it, I relax my guard a little bit. So I thrust, boom, I'm relaxed. Now here, okay, so there we have a stoccata, right? which is what we want right there. So that's what you want, right? Yeah. Okay. How to defend yourself against a stoccata. First of all, how to get your opponent to throw a stoccata. I could still just press my opponent. That's going to make him want to throw a stoccata as well. I could throw provocations of all sorts. Uh, those thrown from Kudung Estrada are effective. Here, though, just to introduce something new, from Ching Hiali Portfair Estrada, make a thrust, or you can do a tramazzone either into... This guard, when he makes the trauma, only hit that with your dagger and strike the head with a reversal. Create a situation he wants to attack, hit that, and strike the head. Hit it with the dagger's true edge to your inside, to your right side, your dominant side, right? So create the space, hit that, strike here. And you see my, my right foot there went behind my left foot. The dagger arm goes underneath the sword arm, typically because of the, the force involved in a hit like that. Tramazzone. Hit that. Strike here. Or I can thrust with a passing step. Thrust. Strike that away. Hit that. And with my strike, there are two steps. I advance with my provocation making myself open. This is a step. As I do that, watch my sword over my head. And there's the second step with my back foot. Advance, you're open. Hit that. You see, when I hit that, look at my sword arm. They go together because it needs to. I want those to go together. Those aren't separate actions. Here, strike, strike. If I've provoked my opponent winding up in Port Strutta, so he attacks me with a stoccata. I join with that. So what is joining? He actually describes it pretty well. A, a little bit spread out, not all in one place. But uh, to join means to capture it in your forte. He says your true edge to theirs. And lay your forte down on top of your opponent's sword and then extend. He does say thrust in the face, but let's be careful and keep that away from the face. So I've pressed her, however, I've gotten in. We join and thrust. Now there is a, a, a footstep here of the uh, dominant foot. So to break it down slowly and carefully, when I get the thrust, I, this is a, look where it's deflected. You see, and this is not about the dagger even. 
This is aimed right at me. The, the joining deflects it away from me. I lay my forte down on top and then I thrust and I would actually step forward with my dominant foot when I did that. He does, he does say though, accompany this with your dagger, which is fine, but you'll see this technique in the unaccompanied sword as well. Approach in a way that's provoking and uh, opens, opens the, the way, join and advance and return into Porch Verstretta as a result. Another breakdown, get a little close, deflect that, bend your elbow. It's not a beat. It's not a hard parry. Doesn't, it's not this sort of, it's not where I'm, it's not that. It's not, we've already done a, we've already seen a reversal beat, it's not that. It's something much softer. Use your, use your forte in a way that, that catches it. That sword of my opponents, it's here, right here, caught on my cross guard. I didn't knock it away. I'm on top, as he said. Thrust stepping forward, turning into Port Ferristrata. When you catch, when you join, it's not something done with the arm all by itself. I'm not doing it with my arm. There's body movement here. You, you want to, you have to turn. I am starting in Port Ferristrata with my right shoulder forward, but then I change and you see here what happened? My left shoulder moved forward. However, I got closer to my opponent, my right shoulder is forward. But when I join, I change to my left shoulder being in front and then I thrust, accompanied by the dagger into Port Ferristretta. When this is coming at me, it's almost like sliding down the sword into this position. You see the join? That's why when I turn my shoulders, that's causing my sword to move backward relative to me. You see? So as I turn, that happens. And then here, you see it's very quick. Don't do that. I can do that. You shouldn't be messing around with that kind of stuff. That's dangerous. 